Today's video, we're going to be breaking down a full little mini ebook here out of the Gun Spread Formation Man 24. Kind of a fun little ebook because of how good spread is and the RPO scheme is. This will work in regs. This will work in MUT. This will work in CFM. There are some route combinations in play setups we're going to be showing you that are going to need Hot Rod Master or Slot Apprentice, but this whole, the wholesale scheme is going to be able to be ran very easily without it. So super, super excited for this ebook. And if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure that you join the Patreon. It's only $10 to sign up for the Patreon. It'll get you access to all of our offensive and defensive ebooks just like this. The ones in the Patreon, a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more if this, then that, a little bit more uh, high level breakdowns in there, but super, super excited about this spread ebook. It's really, I think, going to be taking over competitive Madden. People don't realize how good and how really almost broken this offensive ebook is going to be. So I hope that you enjoy the scheme. We'll watch until the end. We got something cool at the very end for you guys. A really good red zone mini, uh, mini scheme out of this playbook as well. So make sure you watch to the end and let's get into the audibles. Okay, for the first set of audibles here, we're going to be taking a look at this slot offset formation. And the first audible we're going to be setting here is the uh, mountain, or the uh, mountain, uh, the motion Y cross, the uh, RPO peak zone bubble, which is already set, the motion uh, triple option, and then really any of these motion plays, it's kind of honestly up to you. I really like the uh, motion double post as well, uh, another good play. But we just want as many of these little uh, motion plays as we possibly can. Now, there is something that you really want to kind of look at when you're looking at the spread playbook, and there's a specific play that you really want to have in as many formations as you possibly can. And that play, if we come over here to the trio offset weak formation, this is the play that is going to make this offense absolutely incredible. It is these RPO read bubbles or RPO read wide receiver screens. So we are going to set as many of those as we possibly can, and it is going to make it so that it's almost impossible to stop your offense because you are going to be able to have these RPO style read plays, and we'll explain a little bit more into that once we get into the formation specific breakdowns, but set as many RPO read screens as you possibly can, and then um, real quick, all, I'm not going to go through all of the audibles. You can see in the actual formation specific breakdowns what we're going to recommend. But in general, uh, the base formation is honestly up to you. You can come out whatever you want. I really like coming out in the trio offset or the trio offset weak formation and then audibling into the rest of my plays, okay? Um, the only other formation that I really want to just kind of highlight here right out of the gate is the gun monster and gun double stack. So uh, real quick, what we're looking for here is as just – there's only three plays in the monster. Um, the the double stack here, again, you see how we have this RPO zone alert screen? The better play is the RPO read FO screen, okay? Again, the RPO read plays are better than just a standard RPO play, and we'll explain why uh, when we actually get on the field. But you can set whatever you want, uh, four verticals, curl flat. I don't know that curl flat is that significant of a play. PA jailbreak screen, really not a very significant play. I like the RPO trap alert screen or even the stack out. That'll get us a corner route out there. Smash is another good play. So really whatever, it's up to you uh, what you want to do. We're actually going to go smash here. But in general, uh, you want to be looking for these RPO uh, read plays. That's going to make this super, super, super effective. Uh, you could also run this little pistol doubles here. The cool part about these, what I like to do in formations like this is set like super, uh, what I would call constraint theory plays. So plays like jet touch pass, um, the jet touch pass fake halfback little slam play. Um, you know, we're looking for just kind of like these little constraint theory plays that are going to, you know, force them to have to respect the fact that we can do a lot of cool different things out of this playbook. Um, another really underrated formation in this is the box offset week. And we're going to get into some really cool setups uh, for this. It's going to be our, one of our primary passing formations here. Uh, but anyways, that's going to do it for audibles. Outside of that, just set whatever you want. Um, the split slot formation, like these, if I was just going through and setting these audibles here, guys, I would just be looking for plays like halfback sweep week. Um, and then I've got read option here. So maybe I put the read option here, halfback sweep week here, and then whatever key passing play and really you're all just looking for routes when you're audibly and around a lot you're trying to find um or set audibles that have like unique routes like for example pa reed has this unique crossing route it has jet touch pass we're going to show you some really cool stuff out of this uh a slot formation as well another really really good passing formation um for an, a great example here doubles offset so we're going to set the jet pass. We're going to set the zone fake jet pass. We're going to set the play action jet sweep. 
right? And then we can have one other, you know, maybe RPO pl- RPO style play um, or passing play that we really want to use. And typically, you know, a great example would be this PA read play or the FL spot play. Um, we're just looking for like, what are the, what is that key route or what is that key play that we can't really create from anything else? So in this example here, we are just going to use the play uh, PA read, get a couple of good things accomplished with that play. And then again, you can kind of go through the, the formation and really do what you want. But this is kind of how I think about audibles uh, in this specific formation. And we're going to get into the play breakdowns. So the first formation we're going to be breaking down in this ebook is the trio offset week formation out of the spread playbook. And we're going to start with really the foundational play of this offense, which is the RPO read bubble. Now, I said in the introduction that these RPO read plays are basically superior if they have the word read in them. Now, we're going to first start about uh, showing this against dollar. And then we're going to kind of get into uh, how your opponent can actually, the if this, then that of the RPOs in Madden 24. So the first things first, I would really recommend and advise that you run this formation with your trips to the wide side of the field, because in an RPO scheme like this, spacing is going to make it, I think, most effective. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to baseline press. And this is kind of your standard DB fire too. And a lot of times they're going to use her on the running back side. So they might use her here to the left. But I just want to show you like our keys here. So if you look at this real quick, the R defender is this slot corner. And basically if that slot corner blitzes, then you are going to throw the ball to the circle receiver. Now, the other way we can show this here, I'm not sure. I will, we'll show it in the replay. But basically, you'll see he'll come down, and then we can throw this this little bubble screen. Now, right there, the actual the the hard fat defender actually played out of his mind. Now, take a look here. You're going to see that now, when I'm not base aligned, that is, there's a little P icon over the over the slot corner's uh, head. What that basically means is he's the pitch key or the bubble bubble screen key. So again, you'll see here he blitzes. We throw the bubble, and you see we're off to you know an easy 10 to 15 yards. Now. If you don't throw the ball to the bubble screen, I want to show you what happens. So when it says an RPO read, that means your run, your quarterback is going to run with the ball. Okay. So what do most people do to stop the read option? Most people, when they're defending you and they're trying to stop the read option, they're going to put their option defense onto conservative because they just basically want to have to shoot the inside zone. So essentially what that's going to mean for your offense is they're never going to uh, basically bite on the running back dive. They are always going to play the quarterback. And when you pair a bubble screen with that, the problem that that creates here, if you look to the left side of the screen, watch the P icon defender. You're going to see again, see how he blitzes. This is due to the fact that he is the pitch key and he is technically optioning the quarterback. So all we have to do is maybe go to a play like this RPO read screen. This is the same basic principle, except now we're throwing a a flanker screen as opposed to a bubble screen. So now as you look at that slot corner, he has the R icon. We know that generally speaking, he's either going to go for the running back or the quarterback. He's really never going to defend the slot receiver. So we'll just snap this ball. You see here, he goes to the quarterback. We can throw this little screen. And as you can see, we're able to get plethora, a plethora of yardage. Okay. Now, what is the most popular way that people like to stop bubble screens in Madden 24? One of the most popular ways is they're going to take this slot corner and they're going to man him up onto the circle receiver on the bubble screen. If you watch what this is going to do in real time here, you're going to see he's actually going to, you see how he blitz right there? He's going to blitz at the quarterback. The reason why he's going to blitz at the quarterback is due to the fact that he is in the run fit defensively. So again, if they were to go to something like this, All we have to do is wait for him to blitz. So we're looking at him. You see, eventually he's going to blitz. He blitzes. Now, as you can see there, the the hard flight is playing the route, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this is where I actually really prefer this read screen over the bubble screen. So same situation. This time we'll man this guy up onto the square receiver. So what you'll see again, he's the R defender. He's going to eventually blitz. I can throw this screen as soon as he blitzes. And you see this is a, a, an easy way to attack the defense. What's really interesting to Madden 24 that I've noticed with these RPOs and what makes them, I think, so difficult to defend is there's really not a good way to defend them. They have to basically do – let's just do a, a defense that looks like this. So we're going to be stock man-to-man. 
over there on the left-hand side, and I want you to take a look at this RPO right receiver screen. Watch the triangle wide receiver, Valdez Scantling. See how he's blocking there? And yes, he can make a tackle, but it's significantly less effective, okay? Now, the other thing is, and this is where we kind of get into the cat and mouse of this, of this, def or of this offense, Let's say they man align or they get they get you in align they get in an alignment where it looks, you know, kind of like what you see on your screen. Now, if you look to that slot corner, he is the pitch defender, but he's still going to typically blitz. So if I was to go to this bubble screen, you'll see he blitzes, we throw the bubble screen, and as you can see, we're off to the races. Races. So the only real method that they can use to defend a bubble screen and it doesn't matter if they're man aligned or base aligned or whatever, is they can basically, they can man this guy up here. They can man this. If we play all straight out man-to-man -man on the left-hand side, I want you to look at this bubble screen behavior. You're going to see that because those two defenders on the left are in the read key, they are always going to blitz, and you're going to be able to throw your bubble screen. So the only if this in that formula for them to actually be able to defend this is they basically have to play a hard flat on the outside and they have to play man coverage on the inside. So it's going to look something like this. They might put a vert hook here on the left-hand side, but but ten, the, the main thing is they have to have a hard flat that is outside of the defender. So you see here, if I were to throw this, sometimes this will still get open because they will block it up better than other times. But as you can see, this is a very, very difficult play to stop consistently. Now, the route that we have off of this is this play verticals. What's really cool about this play verticals is if you look out to, to the left side, we're going to have this fade route. So imagine, again, you're playing someone and they're running kind of the meta DB fire too. And how do they stop this guy on the left? Well, they have to have a flat defender, soft squat, cloud flat, something. Oftentimes their baseline, even if they're man aligned, they're still going to be in this same dilemma. So all we're going to do to attack this defense is we are going to flat the, um, middle trips receiver we are going to streak the inside trips receiver we're going to streak the tight end and then the running back really can do whatever you want i like to put him on just a basic wheel route what you're going to see now is if they are trying to defend you out of the cover two that outside route is going to be wide open to the outside so as you can see here we've got a, a really nice little if this then that formula out of this simple formation and it's going to cause them to do certain adjustments another adjustment that you're probably going to see is they will cross so to stop that route they're going to take this safety and they're going to cross man him onto that outside trips receiver because this flat zone has to help on the bubble screen so he's got to be in a hard flat well now if you think this out what are these two defenders going to potentially be in more than likely they're going to be manned up okay in this uh in this way of, of defending this formation so that leaves a very isolated coverage here on the back end on the right side of the screen that they can realistically actually play and have some success with. So what we're going to do is we're going to play action off of this as well. So we're going to go to this play, play action, flanker spot. And all we're going to do, as you see here, we have this bubble screen to the left-hand side. We are just going to streak that middle trips receiver. We're going to tight it, tight in apprentice post, the tight end, and we're going to drag the outside trips receiver. So you see, it looks just like this. Now, if we get this, if they get this defense, look at how open the tight end is going to be because they have had to put a significant amount of resources into defending the flat on the left hand side. So this simple little offense here, you know, again, is going to make a massive, massive difference. Make sure that you're actually putting your tight end on a post because one thing that's a little unique about trio offset is the tight end is. He's not actually, I guess technically he's not actually a tight end, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, you don't even have to necessarily do that. You can put him on, you can you can just put him on a smart routed in. Um, since he is a technically a wide receiver in this alignment on the, left, on the right, the other thing that I would advise you to try out would be this right here. So PA flanker spot, we're going to slant the tight end, streak the middle trips receiver, and call the play like this. Again, if they are over adjusting to that left-hand side to try to stop these bubble screens, it means they're probably going to be in some type of man-to-man -man coverage situation, oftentimes cross manning, which is then if you just think this out, they don't have anyone on that left side of the field to defend this tight end on this little slant. 
So I don't know what he's doing there, but anyway. So consider slant, slider press post, whatever you want to do. Okay, so that's that setup, and then we'll show you one other play out of the or setup out of the play verticals. So the next thing that we'll do, and again, you got to think this out, but a lot of times, what people like to do against trips formations this year, they love to cross man. So you're not going to have to worry about match coverage because they can't really play match against this. But essentially, maybe they do something like this or they double flat the left side. They still have all the cross manning. And then on this back side, they're going to basically, you know, maybe just man this guy up on the tight end or something. Okay. If you get a coverage like this, then this is where this play verticals is going to become really, really handy. All we're going to do is we're going to put the outside trips receiver on an out route. He's going to draw a lot of defenders. We're then going to put the running back on that running back wheel. And then with the tight end, you have two options. You can either put him on a slot apprentice or like a hot route master, whatever corner route, if you want to do that. Or you could put him on a streak. I guess you have technically have three options. Or we, and this is probably my favorite, just put him on a basic little in route that will beat man coverage. What you'll see here is if they are trying to do all these different types of man ups, now your crosser has the whole right side of the field to be able to work against the defense. So if they're trying to do a lot of different man ups to start up your RPO, RPO, this is a very advantageous way to call the coverage. So this will do a decent job against the RPO to the left side. And we'll get back to that in a minute about talking about what you can do if the RPO is actually covered when you call the RPO. But this setup right here will absolutely crucify man to man. So as you can see here, the crossers open, the running backs open to the, to the sideline. You have a lot of different options um, in terms of this. Now, another little underrated setup here that I didn't really get into too much, but we will talk about it right here. It would be something like this. This is really good against just like basic zone coverage because the running back's going to get into this really soft spot of the zone right in that little area. And we know that running back wheel routes often do a really good job of attacking man coverage. Now, the purpose of the running back wheel for that coverage that we were just showing you and, and why I really like this running back wheel here is because let's say your opponent is doing some adjustments like this right here, like we showed you. It means that nobody's on the running back. So they're basically saying the running back is my responsibility. So they're going to take the running back out of the backfield almost every single time. What that's going to do is, again, it's going to leave this receiver, this uh, circle receiver on this deep crosser, wide open. And this cross man is not really going to guard this. As you can see, it gets over the top, and it's going to be able to easily beat the cross man coverage. Now let's go back to kind of the beginning of all this and talk about what do you do if your RPO basically is bagged? Okay. So we're going to do it like, so, and we'll set up that same defense and we'll use even cross man. So at the snap of the ball, if you think this out, we have so many people going to the left side of the screen and I want you to watch, I'm going to try to force the bubble screen. So snap the ball. I force the bubble screen. As you can see, it's very difficult to intercept. Most of the time, what they're going to have to end up doing is they're actually going to have to end up going and usering the bubble screen. Um, there's not a real clean, clear cut way to defend this bubble screen um, and actually get it to be like a, a pick or something. So show it to you again. See, they're sitting on it and they actually played it pretty good. Okay. Now, let's jump into instant replay and let's talk about what are the options we have available to us if they are able to slow down this. If we see defenders in this area right here, the defenders are in this area. This is actually the, probably the perfect defensive call. A couple of things we have. We could hold down the X button on PlayStation or the A button on Xbox, and we can run the ball to the running back. Because look how many people are going to the left side of the screen. You have five, six, seven players, defenders, um, going that direction. The other thing we could do here is if I don't throw this ball, I can actually keep it with the quarterback. Now, the keep with the quarterback is it, it does depend a little bit on what they're doing from a coaching adjustments perspective. Okay. It does certainly depend a little bit on what they're doing from a coaching adjustments perspective and what their user is doing. Oftentimes they're, they're wanting to probably do this with their user so that he comes over and stops the run. But if they are able to stop the pass, I can just run the ball with my quarterback. And a lot of times you can shake that one defender and be able to uh, be able to, you know, get a, a decent game. Now, why did that happen? Well, the reason that this guy actually took the running or the quarterback 
is because he is option uh, because my option defense is on conservative. We're cross manning this guy on a circle. Okay, so we're getting really adjusty on the back end of this. So keep that in mind as well. Obviously, we're not trying to give our opponent a ton of time to set up a defense. But if we were, this is a pretty adjustment uh, heavy defense. So now what I want to show you is let's say they option the running back. So again, that guy's the read defender. So here the read defender comes down. Watch me keep this with the quarterback. And you see that now it's up. So essentially what I'm trying to get at here is if they are able to stop the bubble screen, then your quarterback is in a read option basically with the running back. So again, you know, cloud here, hard flat here. You know, I mean, this is a very adjustment, adjusted coverage on the back end, but let's just take a look here at this uh, read defender. So I look, bubble screen's bagged. They're actually staying there, so I'm going to run the ball. We have a numbers advantage here, and you see how powerful this run game is um, off of this. Now, another big point that I want to talk about is this wide receiver screen. So this wide receiver screen is really a great play, uh, play call if they're starting to do things like man this guy up onto the circle receiver. And the reason why is let's take a look at the read key on this play. What you're going to see is we get the basically the same thing, but look what that uh, uh, slot corner with the P over his, uh, the P icon over his uh, head. At the snap of the ball here, you see how he is basically not really worried with the screen on the outside, which is probably what he should be doing. And the reason why is because he's been manned up onto the circle receiver. So because he's man locked on the circle receiver, he has to do whatever the circle receiver does in a pass key. So even if they're in a defense that looks something like this, which I would say is actually a pretty good, let me uh, recreate it because I totally messed it up. But I would say this is actually a pretty good method. Um, and a lot of people, what they'll probably end up doing would be something like this, to be honest. This would, this would be a little bit more of like a obvious you know, pass coverage that people would actually use. The point being... All we have to do is go to this RPO. Now, obviously, I understand it's a tell, but we're going to snap the ball quick. Throw the screen. You got all the blockers out there in the world. It's easy gains for your uh, for your passing, okay, or for your for your uh, quarterback. Okay. So now, uh, what does that? So let's say, for example, that okay, they they you know they they've made a lot of different adjustments, and really they're probably going to end up in some kind of defense that looks something like this, which is. Pretty common, okay? Um, the problem is they're running out of resources of who can man up on the triangle receiver. And so because they're running out of these resources in terms of what they can actually do to slow this down, this is where this PA flanker spot comes in very helpful. All we're going to do is we are just going to, um, I mean, you could do really whatever you want, but what you'll just look, just watch this corner. See how it's wide open? The reason why it's wide open is because they're having to do so many things from a cross manning perspective. One of the things that is very likely to happen if you're running this, if you're running this offense is this guy on the outside here is going to probably be in a cloud flat. Okay. Now from there, there's a lot of different things they could do, but typically it's going to be something like this. Okay. And then, you know, it might even, it might be more so something like this. Okay. So you've got all these adjustments here to the left-hand side. You might be thinking, okay, so how do we attack this? You go to the play PA flanker spot. You streak the inside trips receiver, snap the ball. Because he's cross-manned, he burns the man coverage. So if they're trying to do outside-inside approach to stop your bubble screen, it's worth throwing it on the field. It's worth throwing a combo like this on the field because what do they have to do to stop this? This guy has to man up onto him. This guy has to be the hard flat. This guy has to be the cloud. And then you could maybe do something like this. And this is not a terrible adjustment. But what is that adjustment terrible for? It is terrible for this because that guy's going to blitz. Okay. Now, yeah, the guy played it a little bit better over there on the left, but normally that's going to be wide open. Okay. So a couple different things here. And if they are man locking you, like they're just playing man to man coverage, guess what do we, what do we call against that? Well, what I like to call is either verticals where we're going to drag um, or actually we don't need to drag the tight end. We'll just call verticals like this. We can put a comeback on the outside if we want. But if they're going to play you in man to man coverage, this uh, streak a lot of times can get open over the middle. And there's other things that we can then audible to. We haven't even gotten into that yet. 
Okay. So one click over, if we audible to the trio offset, it's just going to move the running back slightly. And now what we're going to be able to see here is this is a little bit more of a traditional trips tight end style look, but we still can throw this RPO. Um, we still can throw this RPO alert screen. So all we're going to do is we go one click over. This is actually a better handoff animation. And what you'll see, throw this, and we're able to attack. Okay? So super, super simple uh, in terms of the trio offset weak formation. There's a lot of other things we can do. One of them is motion the running back to the right and motion him out wide. What this is going to do is now, again, they're putting so much energy into trying to stop us on the left side of the screen. Doing something like this will give us a lot of threats over here on the right side of the screen. So what I like to do from time to time, another setup that I really like, is if I feel like they're slowing me down over here on the left, I'll go with this setup right here um, to the right. And let me show you the play art here. You're going to see a simple Y cross setup. What makes this good, though, is all of the threats are running their routes to the right side of the screen. So they're going to be much, much more apt to be able to get a lot of separation because most of the resources are going to be spent on the left. Okay. So that is um, a little bit about trio offset and what I like from this. Let me come back out of here and let's go take a look at some of the other plays in the formation. So we have PA flanker spot. I really like that because you have the bubble screen, you have the corner route there on the left. Okay. You also have um, this play PA flood. PA flood is just is just every bit as good as PA flanker spot. It might even be a little bit better because you have this tight end post. Another really underrated play um, is this this fake screen uh, wheel play, which we'll cover that as well. And then uh, curl flat is good because you have a tight end corner. So we'll actually replace verticals with that, and we'll go over some setups that I like for all of those different plays. I'm actually going to grab two other coverages here that are going to be more popular that you'll probably see. Most people are probably not going to run man coverage. Um, and if they try to run man coverage, they're going to be basically using cross man most of the time. They're not going to be just coming out man from what my experience is running this. Okay. So let's talk about this play fake screen wheel and why this play is also very good. So this play is also very good because again, what do most people like what are most people going to be, what are the adjustments, right? What are the adjustments most people are going to be using? Well, one of them is going to basically be this right here. So we're going to get this man alignment feature. And then this guy is going to be typically here. This guy might be here, here. And you might even get just a basic adjustment like this. Okay. If you look here on the left, the reason this is such a good route combo is number one, you can hot route out of it, which not every fake screen wheel you can, but look at this here. I'm going to put the slot receiver on a streak and I'm going to throw this little fade over the top of a cover too. This is really good for people that like to run any kind of like double Mabel defense where they're backing off cloud flats, um, you know, stuff like this right here. And then typically this guy's going to be in a hard flat. They might man this guy up to try to stop the RPO. The more they start to try to defend your RPO, the more this play is going to be open. All we're going to do, streak circle, snap the ball. Watch, he's going to clear that cloud flat, and you're going to possessing possession catch it, okay? Really simple play, but really effective, and something, another cool little thing you can do is you could put that square receiver on an out route. Now, you might be asking, why would I want to do that? One of the best ways to attack this cover two style defense is a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll put that guy on the vert hook, and this guy will be on the hard flat. So if they're in a defense like that, where that cloud flat is is way backed off, this little quick out right here, just a simple little five yard route, but it can be very effective for just kind of me and Nicky Nacky, especially against like four three even six one style of formations. All right, all right. So the next uh, route combo we're going to show you is the play curl flat. What's cool about curl flat is it looks very similar to our bubble screens and all of those things that we can do. If you just float the running back to the right, you can put him on a Texas route, you put him on a streak. These are all really, really good setups. You can curl on the backside. There's a lot of little things like this, but really the easiest setup here is to motion the running back out wide, drag the inside trips receiver, and put the outside trips receiver on a smart routed in. 
why would we call this play if they're running a lot of zone um, and they're not mabling on the right? This is a great little motion setup. Again, what are we trying to do? We're trying to get them to have to use resources to defend us to the right side of the screen so that then we can come back and we can just throw this little bubble screen if they're not, um, you know, if they're not being disciplined about their coverage. So they have to do so much to stop your RPO game that this little stuff is wide open, okay? Read key defender, he stays home, we give the ball to the back, that's always there for you as well. What I really like about this offense is it's really hard for your opponent to guess right. It's really, really hard. So we're going to hard flat here. We'll man up these two guys. I want to show you. So this is what we look like here on the left. And if I go to this bubble screen, if I wait on this, let's see right here, just wait on it a little bit longer, bubble screen gets out, and you're able to hit a big play, even though they manned it up, even though they have a hard flat. And that is the value of the RPO read keys and using the read keys. Okay, we're going to show this out of some other uh, plays on the formation, but this is the trio offset week. And then if we want to, we can check into the trio offset and really run a lot of similar things to what I would say is more of a traditional trips tied in. So the biggest thing here, you can really put whatever plays that you want in here. But again, understand we're probably going to run this again, more like a traditional uh, trips tied in. So we have the RPO alert wide receiver screen. We also have the RPO alert bubble verticals and PA post shot. So how would we set some of these route combinations up? And again, we would typically be audibling into this from this formation. So the way that we would set this up, PA post shot, okay? Flat in streak. Pretty popular combo, really, really good. Why? Because it gets us to have receiving threats that are going to the right side of the screen. Most of my combos that I'm gonna recommend to you out of the trips is to get us to uh, is to get them to respect the fact that we can throw the ball to the right side of the screen, okay? Because we're already doing so much to the left side with these bubble screens. And the bubble screens are the key uh, to unlocking all the things we can do from our offense. The other thing is if you have a tight end uh, apprentice or slot apprentice, this is one of my favorite setups here out of tight end YN. Just something simple like this, using the tight end. Basically, just we're just trying to use the tight end apprentice post to get us a threat to the left side of the screen. The play, uh, let me go over the play PA flood real quick. So the play PA flood, what I would what I would do is really just out route the circle or the square receiver, streak the circle receiver, and then in route the tight end. What this is going to do is against cover two, which we're going to basically force people into playing. The corner route is going to be able to get some separation. Okay, so at this point in the video, you probably are saying, okay, we've been throwing the ball to the left a lot. What are we going to do if we're on the left hash and we want to attack the right hash with simple audibles? What I like to do is audible into uh, this Y trips formation. And if I can find, yeah, the Y trips offset week. Now, this is a formation that Cole Boltz made pretty famous last year because of this motion halfback swing. Um, there's actually a lot of things we can do off of this. Now, the only from an audible perspective, what I like to recommend is these audibles right here. I like to play motion halfback swing, read option, motion Z spot, and comebacks. Now we're going to be audibling into this out of our trio offset weak formation. And when you audible, a lot of times they can't back off their corners. And this is why this is such a good play. We're going to go to Z spot first. Because again, they're probably in a defense that looks like this. They're all jacked up. These corners can't be backed off once you audible. I would come out and audible almost immediately uh, to this if I knew I wanted to run this. But here's the big beauty of this formation. They're going to be scared to death the running back uh, the one the running back swing route, right? So all we're going to do here is we are just going to restreak the tight end. We're going to drag the solo wide receiver. And then I like to drag the outside trips receiver as well. It's going to give us a little mesh underneath. It's going to be really good for cover two. This corner route on the right, you're going to see he's going to clear, and he's going to get over the top of this cover two. The reason we're going to call this if they're running a lot of cover two 
is because um, because most of the time they're going to be using the cover two to try to slow down your RPO game, right? So we're going to be able to easily check into this. Now, again, why trips? Another play that I really love is this motion halfback swing, of course. So what makes this good is, is there's almost no way to stop it, to be honest with you. They have to user it, and all you're going to do is basically just pass lead. You see there that the hard flat defender didn't stop it. But let me show this. Uh, let me show this from a baseline, not baseline perspective. But let me just show you what the uh, some adjustments would be like. So you audible into this, and let's say they immediately baseline press pinch. You know they start to get adjusty. Now they know the corner route can hurt them, so they're going to maybe cloud flat over there. They may be the hard flat on the left, on the right side. The beauty of this is if you watch, a lot of times if I wait on this just a second. They will block him, and you can get out and get a big play. So it's a super, super simple little read, but um, it's really, really difficult to defend. They almost can't defend it in man, and I'll show why. So this is a very good play if someone's running a lot of man-to-man. -man. So if they're running a lot of man-to-man -man like spinner, per se, take a look at the uh, adjustments here. Oftentimes, you're going to get something like this. You're going to get a scissor on the backside. You might get this guy banned up. It doesn't matter. Anyone on the left side that is manned up to the running back is pointless for this for this route combo or for this play. So you see here, boom, get an instant block. He's out. They can't run man coverage on that. But how do they stop bubble screens and RPOs in general? They run man coverage. So, you know, you, you, you're getting them to have to run a lot of man coverage or man coverage type of adjustments. And then you're audibling out into this other formation – which is going to cause really two main problems. The first problem being they can't stop the corner route. The second problem being they can't stop the swing route. The third problem being we're going to call this motion comebacks play. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag the outside trips receiver or the outside receiver. We're going to streak this outside right receiver. So now we're in this defense right here. We have a cloud flat because of the fact that we know that we have to stop that swing route, right? Well, now we go to a, a, a beater like this. We have a lot of space over here to the right side. So what you're going to see here is they're going to miss that press. And I would probably block the running back. Unfortunately, I forgot to there. But let me show you. So we'll baseline press this just so it, it's already set up. So, again, all we're going to do is we're going to audible to the comebacks play. Block the running back streak circle. You might want to wait for him to get over there, but streak circle. So now you see this is what it looks like. So the beauty of this is if they run cover two, there's a big hitter over the top of the defense. So there's not much they can really do to slow this down, and, and, and that's the beauty of this offense. It, it takes so much to slow down these little audibles, um, and that, that, that is really, the I think, the value of this, of this playbook. Want to talk about some more uh, little what I would call constraint setups as well that I really like um, that not a lot of people really you know utilize out of this formation. This um, box offset formation is actually really good. Uh, we're not going to get too far into that today, but I did want to talk about bunch just briefly. So we have Y curl. Um, I would set some critical audibles. Uh, Z spot and go is a critical audible. Y curl is a critical critical audible. Vertical is of course is a critical audible. And then really the last audible here is up to you. I probably would say and advise most people to use bunch trail. And I'm going to explain why we're going to use bunch trail. But again, we start in trio offset, right? So we start in trio offset. We audible to bunch trail, which gets us here. We're going to wheel the running back and snap the ball. And what you're going to see is this post will burn cover two for a big play. And it's only one quick, it's a really quick setup. So, again, we're just going to audible over to bunch trail, wheel the running back. That's it. You can do whatever you else you really want. I like to have the corner out on the right. Of course, if you get blitzed, we're going to have to throw the ball uh, to the running back. But what are they going to be doing? They're going to have all these different adjustments to stop your bubble screen. Another good excuse me, another good play is Y curl. All we're going to do for Y curl is we're going to streak our tight end, snap the ball. Again, this is a quick hike. They don't have a hard flat defender, so guess what? We're throwing the ball to the running back. So now what are they going to have to do? Now they're going to have to have a hard flat defender. 
So we go to Bunch Trail. They shade down. Have a hard flat defender. We can do this other cool adjustment. It's a motion block, which will happen really quickly just to give us a little bit more time. Of course, I'm still getting screamed at on the left side, so we'll go ahead and block the running back. Most people, most people are not going to – I don't want to block the running back. That's the thing. Most people are not going to send five if you're throwing a lot of bubble screens. But if they are sending five, yes, um, you can motion this guy to the left. And he'll actually block this guy, hopefully. And you see this will split the safeties because you have a wheel on one side and you have a corner out on the opposite side. So that is, um, that's gun bunch. Uh, another real, really, really important setup. One of the most popular adjustments people like to do against bunch is they will basically do something that looks like what you see here on the left. Okay. They're probably going to use her right here. They might man this guy up. Right. And so this is going to leave a couple of things vulnerable. One of the things that's going to be vulnerable is the left side uh, corner route. So what we're going to do Z spot and go. Now, from a setup perspective, what I like to do in this play is we're typically going to drag the tight end, motion the running back out in the backfield and put him on a streak. And that's really it. So if we get man coverage, we're looking to the corner route on the right or the C route. Zone, though, is 100%. The C route to the left side is super going to be wide open. That corner route or that C route is so effective because they can't defend that with a pressed cloud either. So let me explain. They basically have to have a backed off cloud flat in order to be able to defend this route, which will then open up all kinds of other stuff, like verticals, for example, and we'll show that. But you see here, that corner route gets in a real soft spot. Okay? So let's say they do back off a cloud. Once we audible, you know, you're playing someone, they just, they're really good, so they do some backed off clouds. You're going to go to the play verticals, and you're just going to streak your running back. This has been one of the best plays in Madden for as long as I've been playing the game. And the reason why is because it attacks the area of the field that is really, I think, the best – uh, area to try to attack so this i've got two yellow zones on the field you're still going to see something's going to be open you look to your tight end here your crosser and then your running back tight end crosser running back one of those receiving threats almost always going to be open on this play verticals okay all right so now you thinking through like what are they going to be doing and this is where i really like to go to this gun monster and this uh, gun double stack so if I audible to Gun Monster, I want you to look here real quick at the alignment we get. Okay. So all we have to do, they're going to typically stop these little screen passes. So what I like to do is you can audible to Monster. This is a really, really valuable insight. So you can audible to Monster here to this run play. Notice, okay, they're all messed up. So what are they going to do? They're probably going to base a line. They're probably going to pinch their line. Notice that the players are kind of dumbing out. We audible to this RPO screen. Look at that R defender as the slot corner. That guy's always going to blitz, and you're always going to be able to throw your little screen to the right. Super valuable play. You can, if you want, just audible to this, but it doesn't dumb out the defensive line. So they their defensive line is still in a good position. Now, granted... The slot corner is still the read defender, you know, so he's reading the quarterback is reading him. If he sits, you either run the ball or throw the bubble screen. If he runs in, of course, you run with your quarterback. And now let's talk about one of the most underrated formations in this playbook, which is the bunch open. The bunch open is one of the most underrated formations in this playbook for a number of reasons, and you don't really have to set anything. I like to put the read option in here. But basically, you're in trio offset, and you're going to audible over here to the gun bunch open. And the play we like is PA slots over. It's a very simple setup, and all we're really going to do is just call it. It's basically PA boot over. So you have your drag to your crosser to your backside post. Really simple setup here. Again, this is it's meant to be a quick hike. 
It's just two clicks to the left. And then we can also come out of this and call the play flood. What's nice about this play flood is you're going to streak the triangle receiver. You're going to smoke screen the left receiver. And then you're really primarily reading your high low between your corner route and your smoke screen. A lot more than you might think, but a lot of people, if they're starting to play like these cover fours where they're baseline pressing their cover four, this is probably my favorite formation for something like that because it's a, it's actually a relatively quick audible, right? And we get into this right here. And then all we're going to do is hit the corner route. So we have a flood to the left. We have a cross to the right. And then we also, in this, in this little play uh, formation, have the play spacing. So we have a hitch. Um, we're going to take this triangle receiver, and we're going to put him on a, either post or a uh, – I, I really like to post him, and then we're going to actually drag the solo wide receiver. This is just, again, a little bit more of like a standard constraint theory play. We're just trying to make the defense – or keep the defense honest with some basic passing. And then let's see if we talk a little bit about this tackle over play. So tackle over, um, not a whole lot to discuss here, but same kind of thing. Just now we have the screen to the right. Don't overestimate uh, or don't underestimate the value of audibling two or even just flipping your play. Like just come out, we'll flip the play. Now we're running our RPO to the right. The reason that it could be valuable to run the RPO to the right is because now, if you look at this, we're able to get a better handoff to the running back. So don't over underestimate uh, the value of just flipping your coming out, flip a play, uh, you know, audible or something. It, the whole Mickey Mouse ness of this offense is intentional. It's 100% intentional. Okay. So let's talk about uh, why off trips week. So in the wild trips week, we have a lot of the same plays. We have the Z spot play. We have the halfback swing. We have the uh, little wheel route. And then we also have, you know, uh, some of the more basics like high low dig with a C route on the back end. The reason I like this formation is it's a little bit easier to audible into. And again, you have the C route. So what you can do here is you can go to this high low dig play. And we're just going to wheel the running back. That's the only setup for this. Um, if you wanted to like drag your tight end, go ahead and feel free to do that. But what you're going to get here a lot of times, and this is most people's defense for this, this guy is going to be in the third on the left. This guy might be cross man on the tight end. The slot corner is typically going to be in a hard flat. So you'll see here, this C route is going to get open against that coverage. That's why I like going to this formation, just because it gives me the threat of a C route on the left that they now have to respect that. And then we have everything Everything on the right side is pretty much the same. We have the motion halfback swing. Um, I do think you get slightly better alignment because of, the, of where they're at on the line of scrimmage. So you see here, very little swing pass. Um, bad throw there, but very little swing pass, get up field. Uh, and then the other thing I wanted to show you on this is motion Z spot. So motion Z spot's a lot better on this play. So we're going to streak the circle receiver. We're going to drag our tight end. Uh, and really, you don't have to drag your tight end. You could block your tight end if you want. And then really whatever you want to do on the backside. I like this setup right here. It's simple. And what you'll see is the soft squat will have to respect your little running back route. And then you'll be able to throw your corner route, whether it's cover four, whether it's cover three, whether it's cover two, your corner route should be open on this play. And it's primarily due to the fact that the clear out route is going to be on the line of scrimmage. So it's a little bit easier. You could also go with a setup like this perfectly fine. Uh, but I want you to look here to the right side of the screen. You see we just have a high low between our little swing route and our corner route. And so, again, what are we able to do? We're able to quickly audible to something that is going to allow us to be able to attack the entire field. Now we're going to talk about uh, kind of a little bit of a mini scheme within this formation or within this playbook that I really like primarily for – the red zone, a slot is in here. And then you also have this uh, slot offset. So we're going to use a uh, slot offset as our primary red zone or just heavy run set. And I'm going to show you some dots out of this. Okay. So first and foremost, slot offset is two running backs, three receiving threats. 
So you see, you can only audible to the split slot formation. Um, and there's really nothing, there's really nothing of significant value in this split slot formation, right? You don't really have, I mean, you have read option, you have shovel option, but really there's nothing like, you know, there's nothing massively valuable here. So what I like to do is in this, we're just going to substitute uh, a tight end in the feet into the, see how we can substitute. So the halfback fullback package puts a tight end here, and then you can actually manually sub a tight end out here. So what this allows us to then do is we can audible to ace offset and run jet touch pass, read option, um, really any of these plays, huffback punch, whatever you want. I really like um, being able just to audible around a little bit. And then a slot, you have a slot, which most people you know, know what a slot is. It's one of the best plays, uh, one of the best formations every single year. Let me see if we have a one trap, RPO zone smoke. We have the play smash. And then we also have, of course, the play posts. So now when we come out in the slot offset, and um, I'll show you, let me see if I can find a good setup for it. FL drag is actually a really good play. We'll come out on that. Okay. So uh, the cool part about this is we're going to audible over to jet touch pass. And the other cool part about ace offset is this is the jet touch pass. And you're just going to juke inside. And a lot of times you can get easy scores out of this. What this is really good for is depending on what they come out in. But if they come out on like a pinched dollar, just one click over, you're audible into the jet touch pass against dollar. And what you'll see is a lot of times there's a clear path to at least get a yard or two out of that. Okay. Another thing you have is you have your RPOs. So you can throw your little screen here to the left. The best one is actually to the right side. Let me see if I have that in my audibles here. RPO peak. Yeah, the RPO peak one. This one is the better one. So you have more blockers, and you see here, this is very difficult to stop at like the two-yard line. The other thing you have is a triple option. So you can read this guy inside, you give the fullback, easy little run play, very effective. So most people, when they're defending the spread playbook, it's going to be hard because they're not going to know what to call because you have to respect these bubble screens you have to respect the bubble screens here. You also have to respect the running back read option. And again, what are most people going to do when they're trying to stop a read option play? They're going to option the quarterback. This is why triple options are really good because if they option the quarterback, you roll out here and then you pitch it to your running back. I got a terrible pitch animation there, but you pitch the ball to your running back and you could potentially get this for a touchdown. Let me show that to you again and actually hopefully get a smarter uh, pitch. So again, they stop this, you pitch the back, and you have a potential path to the end zone. Didn't get a good block there from MVS, but just understand you have that. Now, um, really the best dot in this is Y cross. And what I like to do is if you have, uh, if you have like, I'm trying to think the phrase, um, slot apprentice or hot route master, you want to put a post out there and you want to smart route it at the red zone line. And watch what's going to happen here. But what you'll see is he will run across the back of the end zone and he won't stop like he will in, in, if you put him on a slant or something. The reason this is really valuable is because if they're cloud flatting, a lot of people, you know, they're going to be manning people up. I, I would be surprised if they're blitzing five. Um, and even if they are blitzing five, you know, you're going to have whole, there's going to be a lot of holes in the coverage. So typically, you know, we're just going to prepare like they're going with a maximum coverage defense. So what you're going to do here is you're going to put your tight end on a, let me go back to the motion cross. You're going to put your tight end on a post and smart route it. You're going to put the square receiver on a curl and smart route it. And then everything else is really up to you. So I like to put a little backside in route, whatever you want to do here. But what you'll see is this curl will hold the flat zones on the side. And then you can throw this post across just like that. So this is a super little effective red zone setup. Now let's say that you're running this playbook and you don't have the ability to put a route apprentice out there. 
you have this route right here out of the play we came out in. So we're just going to smart route. We're going to motion him in and we're going to smart route him. And then we're going to uh, put our tight end on a curl and smart route it, block our backs here. And you see how we're able to get the same basic behavior. See how he runs across the back of the end zone and he doesn't get stopped. The cool part about this is you might be able to do this with, yeah. So he's already on a curl. So you just smart route him, smart route the post. And then you can really do whatever you want underneath. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put him on a flat, you know, but maybe just something like this. And the sheds are going to be a little bit insane, but what you'll see is these, these little posts will come open over the middle field. And then they're going to have to pick which one they're going to use or across the entire formation. Again, you also have the option run plays and this motion triple option is so good because a lot of times the fullback will be wide open for a touchdown against dollar or um, anything like that. So some other plays that I like out of the slot offset formation, and we'll get actually out of this defense. So some other plays that I like um, motion Z spot is going to be a good option. Let me see if I have any other, I would say is like a really good play. The shakes play is not as good as it used to be. Yeah, let's go over motion Z spot. Okay, so motion Z spot, smart route the tight end, and then just call hike. And the tight end, a lot of times, see how he gets that sharp cut? When you smart route these corner routes and post routes in the red zone, um, or especially on the goal line, they get these little sharp cuts. So another thing that I like to do, here's Tampa 2 with the cloud flat. We have that hitch, though. So a lot of times this hitch will bring that cloud flat inside, and you can you see how I can kind of throw it outside. So the secret to throwing this against a cloud would be actually to go ahead and call this play but block your running back so he doesn't go across on the flat. You don't want that running back on the flat because it will pull that cloud out. And then you see there's this little window. Um, another way that you can kind of get at the same basic idea would be to uh, take this outside receiver, put him on an in route smart or put him on a little in route, put the R1 receiver on a ghost and smart route this. And you'll see here a little bit better behavior, but we're still not, we're still not to the right side of the line enough for this to matter. Um, so let's actually put this ball on the left hash. And what you'll see here is now this little Z spot route will run. Um, if you put him on a curl and smart route it, now you're going to get a little bit better behavior against a traditional cloud flat. Uh, Cause what you'll see is he'll be on the numbers now and there's all this room. Actually, he's not getting open. Unfortunately, it's kind of weird, but this is something you can go to. It's really good against man uh, specifically. So if they are running man down here, that smart routed corner route will get open. Or even the hitch will sometimes uh, get open over the middle of the field as well. But really all you're trying to do here is, you know, I, I would really recommend like audible to this jet touch pass. If they come out and they pinch their defense and they give you a look like this right here, go to your jet touch pass. Your jet touch pass is really good this year. Um, you're just going to take, you know, a juke inside, or you can swoop all the way around and, and get the, the jet touch pass. Another thing is this motion triple option. We got a read key here. If he stands up, we hand off to the fullback. A lot of times that's going to get in for an easy touchdown. Another thing you can do is if you go to this, um, motion Y cross play, just drag the other receiver here. This is also really good against man coverage. And, and the tight end does stop there, but doesn't always stop. It, it honestly is a little, for lack of a better word, random. But what's cool about this play is if you can put the tight end on a post and smart route it, and then you can motion this receiver in and put him on a hitch, this is, this is truly one of the best red zone plays in the game because that hitch will hold the cloud every single time, and that tight end post will beat man, and it will beat zone coverage. So that's my favorite play down here. And then again, don't ever sleep on this right here. These little, these little just quick throws to the backs out of the backfield. I like to pass lead them up so that it kind of leads him upfield. I don't pass lead outside, but I just pass lead straight up against these like aggressive four, three, even six, one. And the, um, like the dime defense you're seeing on your screen right here. This is a pretty good little play again, just pass lead up, boom. And you're in for six. So 
the spread is all about attacking the edges, utilizing the RPOs and audibly and around a lot to really mess with people. That's the primary thing that we're able to do with this playbook. So let me come out of this and we'll actually come back out in our base formation and kind of wrap this up for you guys. Now, again, if you enjoyed the ebook, there's a lot more on the Patreon. This is just the tip of the iceberg, and this is just something I wanted to do for fun, kind of talking about the spread playbook, because I do think it is uh, just one of the glitchiest offenses that you could run right now. Uh, but please, please don't underestimate the power of audibling around, even if you're audibling to like what I, you know, run to run the ball. Like wide trips offset, we're going to go to this little RPO bubble pop, looking out there to the right side. We look. Can we throw the bubble screen? Yeah, we can. Okay, we'll throw it. Juke. Try to get inside. These simple little audible tricks will really, really make it harder to, de to defend this. If you're not audibling around 80% of the time in this offense, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. This play right here, we didn't get to out of the bunch open offset. But this little screen uh, to the circle receiver is really good. The, again, these RPO screens... I just can't stress that enough. And I can't stress like you want to run it to the left and then you want to run it to the right and then you want to run it to the left and then you want to run it to the right. And you're going to force them to, and you want to be audibling um, because if you do those couple of things, it's really going to make a big difference in terms of how they're able to defend you. This Y shell play uh, kind of underrated. You got to post, you know, just something simple like this. If the, now you can attack the left side. The other big play that I did want to highlight is flood. So this is really good for a couple of reasons. Uh, but really the main one is, this is just, again, what's it going to do? It's going to get us to attack the right side of the field when they're going to be setting up a lot of defense to the left side. So this offense is fully equipped to be able to handle a lot of things that people are going to do. Really enjoy this offense. I hope you did as well. And if you want to get your take your Madden game to the next level, join the Patreon. It's only $10, and it will give you access to all of our full offensive and defensive ebooks, as well as all the updates and anything new to make you a better Madden player. Thanks for watching. You can sign up by heading down to the description and clicking the link down below.